Hello, everybody. Um, it's so good to be with you again today. And uh, let me quickly see whom of you are here for the very first time. Oh, uh, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, we miss you guys. We really do miss gathering together with you. But I want to welcome all our family, our friends, and every visitor that's visiting us online. I hope you enjoy the time with us. I hope the previous few um, weeks has been inspiring to you and that you've been keeping your eyes on Jesus. Last week, Jonathan spoke to you about stand, Ahiyaku spoke about stand strong. And uh, next week, Rene will continue by staying strong. But I want to focus a little bit in a different area this morning or this afternoon, whenever you're watching this video. We're going to focus on the cross and what Jesus did for us as it is Easter weekend. And we pray that this sermon will really inspire you. We hope that your heart is at rest and that your soul is in good place with Jesus and that you're keeping your eyes on Jesus. We hope that as we speak to you and encourage you in this time, that although we are isolated you know, from each other, that we are still united in Christ. And no matter what we go through and what we face, and you know, by now there's so many things and that, that realities that have already um, you know, set in and things that we're facing. And we pray that in this season, even what you're facing right now, that Jesus is there for you and that you will find your answers in Jesus. And I don't want to just make it spiritual as much as Jesus is not just spiritual, but he's practical. We pray that in this season that you will find your hope in Jesus and God will give you creative ideas to face whatever we need to face. And uh, we know we're going to get through this. We're going to get through this stronger. We're going to be more um, wiser. And be beyond this also, I believe we'll have a greater impact as the church of God in the world. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Friends, this morning, I'm going to focus on life at the cross. And I want you to turn your Bibles with me to Galatians 2 verse 20 to 21. I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life that I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died in vain. It's a simple scripture that Paul is encouraging us to understand what it means to have a life, what it means to be alive. You know, in this very season, every single person has been challenged with the concept of life. You know, what is life? The values that we have in our lives, decisions we made, our routines have been broken. I mean, so many things and habits that we've had, we had to relook at it. Many of us are facing right now in the season things that need to stop and things that we need to, we had, to, we had to learn new habits, doing new things. And many of us, we faced the very fears in our own soul that, was, that has been, you know, making war in our hearts. And I know in this season, you know, what we're going through, all things work for the good for those who love Jesus. So let's look at it, what it, means, what it means when we say we love Jesus. You know, when you look at this passage, there's three points I want to take from this. The very first point is our life ends at the cross. See, many people want to have life. Everybody are uh, desiring to go into life and you want to have a life now, my best life now. And, and, and how can I make life? We want to do business and all kinds of things, you know, to have a life. But the reality is how do I get to that life that I want? Well, that life that I want starts with death. It starts with stopping. It starts with taking a relook. It th starts with coming to an end of something. Paul says, yeah, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. He's making an emphasis on I. You see, the new cannot come or take root unless the old comes to a stop or the old dies. Thinking about the season that we're in, we all have been facing Things in our lives that we know that needs to stop. All of us have been pondering, you know, when you, when you get out of this cage, when you get out of this quarantine, you know, what, what, are, you, what are the new things you're going to endeavor? Many of us are maybe, con you know, contemplating and thinking about the future and you, you, you're kind of making this list of new habits and new things and new priorities. So this is a season where all of us are revisiting our own values. But I want to encourage you, before we just think about new life, it's important you and I realize that all life starts only after death. All life, all new life starts only when you and I come to the place of a complete surrender, a complete handover, a complete letting go of control, a complete letting go of self, where you and I desire to say, Lord, you be before self. Friends, fear only has its deepest roots when you and I want to protect self. When self is at, you know, at risk. You see, when self is no more there, fear has no hold. 
because fear's hold is on self. See, John 12, verse 24, verse 25 says, I tell you the truth, unless a seed of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seed. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. This is a powerful passage that explains to us exactly what Paul was you know, talking about is when we come to a place, when we come to know Jesus and we want to follow him, we first have to die. John continues with the same theme and he says, unless a seed falls into the ground and dies, it will remain single. There's two things that stands out. The one is dies. You know, die means come to a complete standstill, come to a complete of a moment of a, a literally surrendering yourself. Friends, all of us had to surrender and was challenged with the control of life. Many of us faced that we are out of control and there's things that we cannot control. It's beyond our control. I think about church leaders, every single one of us, we had to face the moment where we say we can no longer control anything and we should not control, but we all have this little bit of a control thing because of the self that is still alive in us. You know, we had to let go and say, Lord, I was thinking about just our own context of every single one of you. Over 12 years, we've laid foundations. We've discipled you and walked with you. And now we needed to entrust that the foundations of Christ in your life are strong enough to sustain you in the season. You see, it's not storm free, but storm proof that we help people to become. And that's the same year. We need to understand that we've come to the end of control. You know, self-exaltation self-protection, self-salvation needs to come to the place where we say, Lord, what happened at the cross, it brings an end to self. See, if we don't bring an end to self, self will always look for self-glorification and self will always, you know, kind of muddle the water. Self will always give us a blurry picture of what the Christianity is really about. And then ultimately we stay single. The second point is that seed stays single. That means there is no multiplication. There's no fruitfulness. Friends, the power of the gospel is not just that you and I get saved, although that is the essence that our names are written in the book of life. But the power of the gospel, the joy of the gospel is that we got saved into a purposeful life. We did not just get saved to die and to go to heaven. We got saved because you and I have a purpose on earth. Even as we are now right in our homes in quarantine, I want to encourage you, know what? We have been born again for a purpose. You and I, there's a purpose that's going to continue way beyond this disastrous moment. You and I have a purpose in life. And you and I need to understand that that purpose starts when you and I put self aside. We allow Jesus to take root in our hearts and we live no longer for self. We live now the greatest value change is when we take self off the throne and we put Christ on the throne and we live for him. You see, when we look at this, it says it comes to the place where self has died. The man who loves his life will lose it. All of us, fear has challenged our love for self. You know, the protection of self. What will happen with self? Friends, I know it's important that there's a healthy love of self, but there's an unhealthy side to it. Even I, my, my son, Jesse, asked me, Daddy, what about this coronavirus? And we're talking about, about it. And I said to him, what's the worst thing that can happen to someone? He said, they could die. And I said, if you're born again, where do you go? He said, I go to heaven. I said, what is bad about that? Now on earth, yes, we want to be alive. But friends, our lives are in heavenly places. Our future is with Christ. We have a temporary time on earth. And the way we live on, on earth as an eternal effect, how we will live eternally with Jesus. We cannot be separated from the love of God. He says, unless a man let go of his life. He talk about the hate, but it's not really hate. It's let go of your life. It's not make your life so important, but make Christ more important than our own lives. You see, why that? Because that's the secret to discovering actually your life. You see, when we look at this point, it's important that we understand not only when we die to ourselves, does it just bring a death to self, but it does bring forward the reality of a new life in Christ. When you think about it, without self-denial and self-death, will there be any fruit in our lives? What kind of fruit will it be? Single means that we have, a limited, we have limited ourselves because of the priority that we've put on self. But when self is out of the way and Christ becomes the priority, not only we find a new life in Christ, but we start to see a meaningful life, a multiplication of fruitfulness in our lives. The second thing we see 
from this passage is our life not only ends at the cross, but our life starts at the cross. But Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It's a beautiful passage. He says, but Christ lives in me. That word, but Christ, is powerful. The major difference between life and death is not church denomination. It is not race. It's not age. It's not rich or poor. It's not being together or being separated. All of these things matter. And although they might be have some value, and they have importance and a place. Nothing compares to the major importance of understanding this, but Christ. It's in Christ that I, you and I find a new life. It's not in self, it's in Christ. The life means, meaning that you and I have a life when we come to Christ and we get born again. In Christ, we have a new life. And from Christ, as we live, continue in Christ, we see that, that we live from this power of Christ. He says, but Christ, and then he talks about in Christ. In Christ is where we continue our life and we find the power of God in our lives active. Friends, if you think about this, when, when are we in Christ? Now, there's a place where you get born again into Christ. But then there's a daily habit of being in the Word, being in prayer, being in line with God's will, being in obedience. All of those things finds us in Christ. Being in spiritual family finds you in Christ. Being in a place of an obedience finds you being in Christ. Being faithful with your generosity, your tithes and offerings being, finds you in being in Christ. Reaching out to lost people is being in Christ. It says when we live in the Word, we stay in Christ. You know, he says also that he loved us and he loved and he gave himself for us. The powerful thing we see here, how did God love us? He gave himself for us. The model that Christ gave us is that he laid down his life to actually prioritize a relationship with you and a relationship with me. You may, listening to the, you may be listening to this video at this moment and you're not sure that your life is right with God. You may be listening to this and you're not sure that you are in Christ and that in this season you have faced all kinds of turmoil in your soul and you have faced all kinds of pain and, and, and confusion and uncertainty about the future. And there's a security in Christ that you've been missing in this season. I've got good news for you. Christ died that you could find your security in Him. Christ died that you can find a new life in Jesus, but it all will start till you come to the place where you humble yourself embrace Jesus as your Lord and Savior and new life will start from there. Friends, I want to encourage you that you'll find your rest in the love of God because the love of God drives out all fear. The cross is an unfair death of Christ, but he initiated a, a love for us by laying down his own life. How can we follow his example? Why don't we lay down our lives so that others can find life in Jesus Christ? I want to end with the last point. Our lives prosper through the Christ. Not only do our lives start by dying to ourselves, death starts at the cross. And then after the cross, we live from the cross. But I want to encourage you that our, prosper, our lives will prosper only as we live, live through the cross, which means I do not set aside the grace of God. The grace of God that saves us is the great, same grace of God that keeps on changing us. It's the same grace of God that has sustained you up to this point, And it's the same grace that will continue to sustain you. The grace of God is not a license to do what I want to do. The grace of God is the empowerment of Christ, enabling human beings, enabling sinful human beings to get right what is impossible. It's God's power inside of us, activating something in us that is supernaturally impossible, we get it right. It's something that human ability, the human limitation has been lifted through the grace of God that you and I can live a life that humanly is impossible. That's the grace of God. God enables us to get right. He's not only asking us through the word of God what, the, why, uh, what life we should live, He also graces us to live that life. See, so how do we get that? We get that simply by applying the cross to our lives. And I want to make it simple. How do I apply the cross to my life? You apply the cross simply by whenever you hear the truth. doesn't matter which source it comes from. If it is the truth, it is from Jesus because Jesus is the truth. When you take the truth, you only have two options. Are you either going to exalt yourself or are you going to you know, humble yourself? Satan exalted himself. He wanted to be above God. Jesus humbled himself to the point of death. Friends, you and I apply the cross every time we hear the truth. We embrace the truth and we repent. 
We ask God's mercy. We bring a self, death to self. Every time I exalt self, I'm causing a, a different type of lifestyle. I'm placing something higher of value in God. But every time I lay it down, every time I repent, I see a death to self. And then by faith, as Jesus was resurrected, the same power that resurrected Jesus from the dead is the same power that resurrects you and I. It brings new life into us. And as we die to self, you'll find a new life come up inside of you because of that repentance moment. By faith, immediate faith application, we accept that Jesus has forgiven us and we accept that Jesus not only has forgiven us, but He empowers us with new grace to live a new life. I want to encourage you. Let's allow the crucifixion power of Christ to bring death to self. Let's allow God to continue to work in us a death to self so that we may become alive to Jesus Christ. The world out there does not need more people who are alive to themselves. The world out there needs people who are dead to themselves. They've humbled themselves before Christ and in Christ they found their hope. And through Christ we bring hope. When you and I die and Christ lives through us, then we'll start to see the fruitfulness of God in our lives. I want to pray for you this morning. I want to ask you this question. Have you given up your life? Have you come to the place where you've ended, stopped putting all your attention and your, your, your everything focused on self? This season has challenged self. I want to encourage you. Don't hold on to self. Don't protect self. Don't try to build self. Don't think about how self will continue after this. Why don't you say, Lord, I lay down self today. I want to put the Lord of Je Lordship of Jesus Christ on the throne of my heart. And I want Jesus to lead me and control my life. Jesus to be the Lord of my life. If you want to do that, why don't you just pray this prayer with me right now? I want to ask you, just where you sit, would you just pray this prayer? Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life today. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to take control over my life. I let go of self. I let go of everything around me. And Lord, I want to ask you to become the Lord and Savior of my life. I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, to forgive me of my sins. And today I'm embracing that you died on the cross. And the same power that resurrected you is the same power that can make me alive. And from today on, I don't want to live for self anymore. I want to live for you. I ask you, Lord Jesus, come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Let me continue to just pray for everybody else. Father, I thank you as we pray and conclude this moment. Would you take every person's heart, Father, and uplift their hearts. Lord, may we find our strength in you. And Lord, I thank you not only did we get born again, to live for you. Lord, we got born again that we can live fruitful in you. And I pray, Father, for the resurrection power in every person's life to make us alive unto you and to be people who live with purpose on earth. God bless you. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. We thank you and may you have an awesome Easter weekend. We cannot wait to worship with you together in one venue, worshiping Jesus together. Please don't miss next Sunday as Renee will be speaking about standing, staying strong. God bless you. We love you.